Year-end can be a stressful time of year for nonprofits and especially staff and volunteers who serve with us. We're so focused on reaching our donors that we often neglect the people who care most, those serving right next to us. Stay locked in in this channel for some innovative ways to appreciate your colleagues. Your end is indeed one of the most, if not the most, stressful time of year. Aside from the days leading up to an event, year end is the most prolonged time of anxiety and pressure for you and your colleagues. Deservedly, this time is focused on building on the relationships we've established with donors and reaping the harvest of our year end efforts with notes, letters, texts, calls, and visits. Our to-do list swells and it seems like our list of needs to be done has become endless with little margin to do anything else. And in the midst of all these things, pressures and stress, we seem to hurt and offend the ones we love most. This time should be focused on blessing and appreciating donors and partners. And you probably do a great job of that. However, if you're a focused person, your desire to accomplish a task for a donor can sometimes supersede the relationships that need to be developed with the person serving shoulder to shoulder next to you. Staff, full time and part time, and volunteers are the lifeblood of any nonprofit organization. So little would get done if it weren't for the human resources serving our organization. And those people are typically the ones most committed to our mission, vision, and values and who work endless hours for little or no pay. And we know that and appreciate them most times of the year. Unfortunately, when things get busy and stressful, we can often isolate, neglect, and even anger our staff and volunteers. We set unrealistic expectations, demand that they do things that are not always in the area of gifting because this time of year is typically an all hands on deck season. It's not our intention to frustrate or condemn, but it happens. So all this makes the time of year the most important time to appreciate our staff and volunteers and recognize their role in the accomplishments and successes of our organization now and throughout the year. I've compiled some tips that will show your colleagues that they are loved and appreciated throughout the year. Tip number one, identify who has done what. It's going to be critical that you recognize everyone who has played a role in your success, however that's defined over the year. It's imperative that you identify for recognition the strongest leader all the way down to the quietest volunteer. However, you really need to identify a strategy to appreciate each person individually and not just collectively. There's a time for collective recognition and a time for individual recognition. Each of us are different and need to be recognized for those differences. That's why even though you might be having a Christmas or office party at year end as an appreciation for everyone, individuals should also be recognized in individual ways. Tip number two, find an activity that everyone will enjoy. I realize that finding one thing that everyone likes to do is difficult, but give it your best attempt. An activity doesn't have to be expensive. It can be a potluck in someone's home or snacks in the office. The important part is that you do something and that it's done together. As a leader, you get a double bounce because you get to recognize a team effort, but you're also building a bond and esprit de corps. Some of the fondest memories that I've had working for nonprofits are the parties and gatherings. From Murder Mystery Theater to Disney Springs and Universal Studios theme park to the time my boss spent a month curing real beef jerky to give to each of us as a gift. All were special and memorable. 
many of my colleagues will say that beef jerky was the best office gift they ever received. For my team, since a lot of them are remote, we've sent gifts and even celebrated victories. Large gifts received are achieving a campaign goal by having a virtual party. Sending people nuts, candy, and even Martinelli's sparkling cider to their home to toast the success makes for a fun bonding experience. Oh yes, we'll be having a group dinner with my local team as well. But remember those remote people. And all these things are great ways to recognize achievements and group efforts, but are also bonding efforts that make a lifetime of memories. Tip number three, find a way to recognize individuals. As I stated earlier, you should find a way to recognize individual efforts. Every person is motivated by different things. Read the book, The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, and it will help you understand what a specific person might like for recognition. If you haven't read the book, it's an eye-opener, and I'll include it in a link below. Some people serve long hours in the office entering data or doing financial statements. Some empty trash cans. Others help coordinate events. Still others help to get a major gift from a donor. All play their part in the success of the organization. For the readers on your team, a book might be a nice gift. Amazon will deliver the book to their home or perhaps the person prefers books on Kindle. Amazon will do that too. For the craft lover, a crocheted blanket, quilt, or a rug might be nice. Food treats like popcorn or snack packs are always great gifts. And for the health conscious staff member, Fruit and nuts are healthy treats. A pen and pencil set or other sets are also very generous. Flowers, plants, and pictures are mostly well received. Personalized certificates and plaques are always a hit and definitely show individuality and uniqueness. Gift cards used to be a special treat for staff gifts but are treated like cash by the IRS and must be included in employees' taxable income. As a result, most nonprofits have stopped giving gift cards. Tip number four, express appreciation by biting your tongue or keeping your mouth closed. It shouldn't need to be said, but I'll say it anyway. Resist the temptation to lecture, confront, or condemn someone during the stress-filled year-end and holiday season. Chances are you're not in the right mind due to pressure coming from many places. The staff member or volunteer might not be in the right mind either due to other commitments or obligations. And both of you may regret words or actions that are said in a confrontational or correctional manner. I'm not saying that if someone isn't legitimately doing a task correctly that you should ignore it at year end, but err on the side of grace and understanding. We never know what someone is going through at year end. It might be the most joyous of times for you, but the holidays may remind people of a loved one who died, a breakup or divorce, a child lost to miscarriage, or even the fact that they're reminded of their inability to conceive. If possible, take a deep breath or many deep breaths during the holiday season and think before speaking. Think the best of everyone and ask them to think the best of you. Everyone will be happier for it. I want these people to be treated with genuine respect, love, and kindness. There's an old adage that says, we always hurt the ones we love, and our staff are loved by us and also hurt by us. Try to work extra hard to appreciate your staff and volunteers at year end, and you'll be so glad you did, not only in the moment, but all year round. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and add a comment below. 
if there's something you especially liked. I'll be releasing more year-end videos between now and December 31st. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when the next video is released. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Take care. Have a good year-end.